I think the most um, difficult thing about being a black student at UCI is definitely the lack of representation. Representation doesn't only just mean seeing people that look like you, but having a um, common experience, you know, having people who can relate to you, you know, mentally, spiritually, psychologically. On this campus in general, being black is almost if you're visible and invisible at the same time. It's very crazy, like you walk around campus and, you, and at times you stick out like a sore thumb. Like when I go to certain classes, I look around, I'm like the only like black person in the class and it's like, damn. And then you feel as if everyone can see you, but at the same time, it's like, people still won't see you because you're black. I really wanted to go out of state, and I had gone into the University of Washington and Oregon, and so I was battling between those two, but it's so expensive going out of state, so I was like, I might as well just go to UCI, because you know, like, I'm pretty much going to be covered by scholarships and grants, so that'll save me money, so that's why I ended up coming up here. I got accepted, and I knew I wanted to go to UC, um, so I was like, I'll check it out. Um, and then, so I visited, and I thought the campus was nice. Um, I wasn't really thinking about, like, the social demographics and things like that. I was just like, oh, it's a pretty nice campus. Um, it seems like I can fit in. Um, and then I also went to, um, like, an event, like a black family breakfast. Um, like during like the welcome stuff for like the new admitted freshmen and so I think that kind of convinced me like oh it seems like the black community here is pretty close tight-knit um, so it seems like something I could prosper at and so that's basically kind of why I chose UCI. Um, I was used to being one of a few black people in like every space I was in so it was nothing new and it's kind of it's kind of sad to say but I was kind of conditioned and being used to being so one of few that when I came onto the campus, it was like, oh, all right, you look in class, you're the one of few black people. Mm -hmm. All right, it's business as usual, so it didn't really bother me as much. But for someone who's coming from like Los Angeles or an area that might be filled with like black people, it might have been like a shock to them. But for me, it was just business as usual. I feel like I, I also was conditioned because um, I was one of few black students on campus. And so, I mean, it's kind of tragic just being in like, like AP classes, honors classes, you just see like an under, underrepresented, um, under the underrepresented demographic, and uh, but it was just something I just got used to over time. I mean, it had been like that since I was like in elementary school, so I felt like um, it was just something that I kind of conditioned myself with. But it feels like it shouldn't be that way. First year, I was the only um, black girl in my dorm, so like in my hall, and I definitely felt like I was the only black girl <laughs> in my hall. Going to school and not seeing any black people, then going home to the hall and not seeing black people, that that like did take a toll on me. I think like college was the first time that I like took race into account in dating. I kind of like forgot that that was a factor, but like coming into college, and I don't know if that's specifically at UCI, but just hearing more of like, oh yeah, like this guy doesn't really like black girls, or like, oh yeah, this guy, like he really likes black girls, and like getting, um, like just like messages from people, like some guy was like, oh yeah, like um, I've never been with a black girl, you know, like that kind of thing, and I'm just like, oh, okay, cool. Um, so like I had never experienced that or thought of that before coming here. Um, and like being here has made that very real. I used to be in a sorority. It was a non-black one. And there was one, or yeah, there was one event where we had our formal and you know, sororities, I get it. You want everyone to look like dressed the same or whatever. But they said, oh, I need to straighten my hair. And I'm thinking, I'm not gonna straighten my hair because as a black woman, it takes a long time for us to just accept our hair and accept that, like, you know, just to love our curls. So that actually kind of hurt me because you're saying, well, my curly hair, it doesn't look professional, it doesn't look nice. Like, what are you trying to say? Um, I haven't really told anyone this story, but like, I went to Trader Joe's once. Oh. And uh, yeah, I, I was profiled, which is crazy. Um, so I walked into the store 
And then right from the onset, like I could just feel like a pair of eyes on me. So like I'm walking from aisle to aisle. And after I walk into one aisle, the security guard stops me and he says, um, if you're gonna um, stay in the store, oh, you gotta buy something. And I was like, well, like what do you mean I have to buy something? Um, so I got profiled. It was crazy because it was like another black person too. He was from, uh, he was from Ghana. He said, I asked him, I said, where are you from? He was like, oh, I'm from Ghana. I was like, oh, okay. And then he said, where are you from? I said, oh, my friend's from Cameroon. So it was even crazy to see how even black people can internalize anti-blackness from things they've seen or even heard. So just being kind of profiled. I wasn't even mad at first. I was more so shocked. I was like, damn, like someone who looks like me comes from the same continent as my parents is looking at me in this sort of life. So that just kind of shows you anti-blackness isn't um, something that only white people participate in, but it's also something that it's ideas and it's ideology that's believed and permeates and everyone can become like a victim of, of those beliefs. I was here, uh, I was walking to the train, I was walking to the bus stop because I was going home. This uh, this older white lady again. I guess I, had I turned my ankle and I was making a face, and then she like I looked up and I was limping, and she just turned around and started running, and she started asking for help. <laughs> She's like, help, help, and I'm like, what? I looked behind me, there was no one there, so I was just like, she was talking about me. So I was taking a course here at UCI. I'll keep the name, you know, anonymous. See, there's a professor who's tenured actually here. Um, and he was doing introductions of his TAs. One of them was black. And so the TA was introducing himself and the TA was talking about, oh yeah, I'm doing this study. You know, I'm um, here at UCI to pursue this field. Eventually I want to graduate and do this, right? And then he said where he was from, he said he's from Arizona. So before he could stop talking, like talking about himself and introducing himself to the class, the teacher stopped him and he said, you're from Arizona? I would've thought you were from Compton or Watts or something like that. And the whole class had kind of laughed. Me, along with my other friends who were in the class who were also black, you know, of course we didn't find it funny at all. It's more like a moment of like truth and realization. Like you would expect that, expect it quote unquote from the students, but to see it from a faculty member and one who's tenured and one in a class that's about urban and urban urbanization and social issues. And they just went ahead and made like a, a black joke or like this like stereotypical joke, right? So I confronted him after class and I told him that um, that was very disgusting and disappointing, especially if he's supposed to be a man of like academia or whatever um, and how his comments were offensive just he kept coming at me like retaliating with like these these irrelevant comments about oh he tried to talk about his history and studying people and this this and that and i've been in the community i'm like that has no idea that doesn't get that gives you no authorization to make jokes like especially you don't even understand with like the power that people have with their narratives and that the consequences of your own words and what that can mean for us as black students you have no idea he wasn't black by the way you have no idea the consequences of what you say and what that means for us in a classroom setting. And now people see that as socially acceptable because you, a professor, an authoritative figure, have now enabled a bunch of people to make that same joke. In my first honors class that I'm in right now, uh, there was, it's about improvisation and how we can uh, use it as a tool to um, come up with new ideas in, in instances where we encounter like writer's block or um, just lack of inspiration for research and one of the guest lecturers was um, talking to us about how improv improvisation is used in hip-hop. The person on my right was a student and he was coming up with like uh, tropes of hip-hop and trying to like relate to me I guess in a sense so I, I kind of felt patronized by him uh, like bringing up all like his favorite rappers and then asking me uh, like what do you think about J. Cole's last album, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, come on, man, like, let's not do this. But funny thing, on my left side, there was these two girls who were very uh, curious about, like, what I had to say about hip hop. And they were asking me, like, in a very genuine, um, uh, like, questioning attitude, they were just asking, like, oh, like, um, what do you think about iambic pentameter? And uh, does hip hop really follow 
I had a pentameter and I would give him like my actual thoughts on it. Um, and my professor is actually very uh, uh, knowledgeable about music in general, but when it came to hip hop, I was surprised that he was so open to me explaining like um, triple entendres and um, just like analyzing hip hop in terms of the, the, the cultural relevance outside of like how to structure hip hop. So there's a, there's a good that comes with it and the, I wouldn't say bad, just more uncomfortable parts of, of it. Something could happen to you at any time, you know, the sense that you weren't really protected that you were vulnerable in ways that other students didn't have to be vulnerable, that you, were, you weren't protected by the school in certain ways that people thought of the school as sort of like a safe haven for their ideas or safe haven for the, just like their physical presence. Like I'm a student, there's something about being a student on this campus that feels protected. But for, for us, it just, I mean, it's just the world again. You know? And I, that vulnerability didn't stop. And sometimes I felt more raw and more vulnerable on campus than I did somewhere else. Um, you know, there's campus police, there's the sense that administration could do stuff to you or like not really support you or withhold help from you or make things much more difficult for you than they already were. Uh, grades and dealing with professors that maybe you didn't dis you disagree with their ideas because sometimes those ideas are really racist and worrying about your grade being affected by that disagreement. Like there's a, there's a lot of anxiety and terror that comes with being a black student that I don't think a lot of other people experience and if they do experience they don't experience it the same way you know i would say i cope with being an underrepresented minority by clinging to the people that make me feel at home like by establishing a sense of community with um with friends and faculty and staff that look like me that that understand my narrative and that can validate me validate my existence validate my struggle uh, validate my strive and determination for success and people that I feel like empower me and can help me um, on my best days and my worst days. The uh, fact that a lot of my friends from high school were already admitted to UCI or even U UCLA. These are people that I've grown up with and people I would consider who look like me and who I'm able to easily express my concerns to and relate to so um definitely like that was like a good way to cope because i had friends already here so that helped but another way to cope was just to i'm a social person in general so meeting and networking with people you're gonna end up finding someone that's like not as like specific to your representation but you're going to find someone like as close to it so that really helped out a lot um there's a lot of people that go to the school that go through the same thing they may not be you know black or african-american but we're all like going through similar things and stuff like that so i would say one of the things that helped me the most my first year and what actually made me want to be an african-american studies major was taking an afam course seen black people in a classroom because usually like my other classes there's probably one other black person or none at all so just seeing like more than one black person in the classroom and then also just learning about um, black studies like it's kind of like how I coped I feel like a little bit like I was really excited to go to my african-american studies class because I could see other black students as well as learn as African I learn about African American studies. Now that I'm taking upper division African American studies classes, um, it's a little bit smaller, um, and then there's mostly just only black students there, and even there we just find there's a community within that. In order to cope with being an underrepresented minority, um, I find spaces like BSU and um, the CBCRR. Um, so like going to the center and like being in BSU has definitely helped me find like a community. I am the co-event coordinator of BSU and um, we ensure that students have a space every week to come and speak about the problems that they're having on campus and um, we just give them topics to like speak about in general and like black politics. And then me specifically, I make sure that there are events where like it allows them the opportunity to get off campus and you know, you know, explore the black community and meet other students um, that are just like them. As far as clubs, I got involved with um, Nigerian Student Association, um, a little bit of BSU, 
And I also got involved with NSBE, um, National Society of Black Engineers. Black, that really helped me as a black computer science major because I feel that um, it really just opened me up into a space where you know I could ask questions with, uh, with people that look just like me and are going through some of the same struggles that I'm going through. So a club that I joined uh, coming in to college has been a great resource was uh, the National Society of Black Engineers, um, which uh, we go by NSB. Um, and that's just been like a great resource for me being a black student in engineering um, when there's so little few, when there's so few of us. Um, and so it's just like an opportunity for all of us like within engineering to come together um, and just like lean on each other and like provide resources. Um, and it's taught me a lot of things, you know, just like being able to get through the classes um, with people that have gone through the same classes that I have that's like upperclassmen. Um, and then like providing like stuff like outside the classroom, um, like jobs and uh, like internship opportunities and just like professionalism and things that you don't necessarily learn in the classroom. Um, and then now for me, like being older, being able to teach everything that I've learned to other black folk that come before me. So it's been like really, really beneficial and really enriching. Um, and that's like been like really the main kind of source that I've been able to navigate through UCI and through my major especially. Um, I'm Christian and so trying to find like a Christian org was kind of hard. Um, I got lucky, I'm in crew and so crew is super diverse. But like initially thinking about it, a lot of the Asian organizations here are like Korean Christians or like Chinese Christians. So I was like, okay, it's gonna be hard to find like a organization that like I feel welcome to. I think the year I came to UCI, so like two years ago, um, ISA, it's like East African Student Association um, was like just starting out. Um, and I think having that community has been super helpful. Cause even at home, I don't have like a big Ethiopian community. Um, so just having a club where like, it doesn't have to be like formal, but we're all just hanging out and like, sharing experiences about like what it's like to be Ethiopian American at UCI or just like in life um, has been super helpful, super comforting. When I first got to UCI last year, I joined uh, ISA, which is the East African Student Association. Um, they're comprised of a few different East African countries, but these are the people that I found who are the most similar background to me, where their parents immigrated from like Sudan or Somalia or Kenya or Ethiopia especially. Um, and they had like a similar like upbringing to me because my experience is a little bit unique in that aspect. Um, I will say though, I didn't take it upon myself to join a lot more of those kinds of clubs because since I was came from a background that didn't have a lot of black people, I didn't really know what kind of communities I was missing out on or like what kind of communities that I needed to like lean on because I never had that before. Um, it was only like this quarter I joined NSBE, which is the National Society of Black Engineers. And now I'm starting to kind of see the kind of connections and the kind of potential that joining um, groups of people that have similar backgrounds on you can have. You don't need to do it alone um, just because you've had it in the past. So. I was one of the founding members of an uh, organization called the East African Student uh, Association. Uh, I mean, anybody pretty much there is welcome, but uh, obviously it's in the name. We kind of recruit a lot of East Africans. That's one community. Um, we both lived in the Black Scholars House our first year. That was another community that we found. Uh, I did live in the Black House with him as well, and I didn't grow up in the Black community, so it was kind of dope just to be like in that space where you could call your own, like you come home and you're just kicking it with all the homies, and there's really um, just a sense of community, and you could just like finally like read. Sometimes like being in this campus, um, you don't um, get much time to do that. The advice I would give to an incoming black student, um, or even just a black student uh, who's still a UC, who's at UCI right now and hasn't necessarily found a community yet, is to basically just um, reach out. Because I know my first year, I kind of, um, I didn't do that right away, is to go look for other black communities. I first just tried to like assimilate within like everyone else, and um, that can kind of feel like suffocating at some time. So just reaching out and finding um, these black resources that are meant for you and are built for you so that you can thrive. We have resources here. You just have to use your resources. Like, you know, cause when I was here, we didn't have the center. We didn't have like a lot of things that we do have now. Now these things are readily available, you know? So I would say reach out, keep your head on straight, um, understanding that you're valid, you matter here, like, 
your body and your presence, your contribution, everything you have to give to the school. It wouldn't be what it is without you. You know, understand that and understand your individual value and what you contribute to this university. Don't ever feel out of place. Don't ever feel like anybody else is better than you. You know, it's, it's easy to get complacent with things that we have now, but we tend to forget the sacrifices that the ones before us made in order for us to get here. And that's what being black is all about, the, the sacrifice our ancestors made, you know, in order for us to be where we are today. I can't keep running away, I can't keep running away, I can't keep running and running and running and running and running away, man we y'all got problem problems that I probably should have all done with yesterday, and if I can't do it then my body chopping them blue away. That you saw was never there. Maybe in here with wisdom. I was looking down on central book and book and family time for the kingdom. 